In this video, I'll show you how to preview and test your survey so that you can run through it to look for errors. I'll also show you how to share your survey with your colleagues so that they have a copy of it and they can test it as well. Before we set up testing though, I'm going to go into survey options and turn on and off a few things to make life easy. I could turn on a back button, for example, so that if people are trying to take the survey for me, say some family or friends or colleagues or whatever to test it out, they can go back and change their answers. Back button works quite well, but it is a little bit limited in that if you've got some branches, the back button doesn't work very well with it. In fact, it probably won't work at all. I also want to show question numbers. Now, I don't want participants to see the question numbers like info and consent, for example, but I want to turn this on for testing so that my colleagues when they're running through this survey can tell me there's a problem with the question called gender for example when you've got a really long survey this makes it really easy to find issues there are no other things that i want to change here now but there will be some that i will change later just before i launch so i'm going to hit save so now let's say i want to share this with my colleagues so that they can all preview the survey as well i'll go to tools and there's an option in here called collaborate and I just enter an email address. If I enter, say, my boss, Nirali Hing, at cku.edu.au, I can add her to this. I can type in a little email, for example. You know, this will be sent to her so that she can add this to her own Qualtrics library. You can share this with people who are outside of CQU as well, just as long as they've got a Qualtrics account. I won't share this now, but that's how you can collaborate with people. Now, remember, we have this preview link that we can do. So now we're working through the preview and we can see here it says info at the top, which is the question number for this particular question. And that tells the people who are testing the survey that if there's something that needs to change, they can tell me exactly what the question number is called. And that makes it really easy to track down things if you've got a really long survey. I'll go to the next page. And now if they say they do not consent, they shouldn't be asked the next questions about demographics. So let's see if this is working. And sure enough, they're thanked for their time and kicked out of the survey. Now I can restart the survey and let's see what happens if I click yes this time for consent. So scroll through, click yes for consent, and now I should be asked these other questions. So gender, I'll put male. What happens when I type uh, you know, words into the age question here? It shouldn't accept it because it should be numeric only. And you can see here that uh, I can select Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, but as soon as I select the last one, it deselects the others, just like we set up in some previous videos. Now it shouldn't accept age there, and it's gonna say enter a valid number. What happens if I enter 120 instead of 100? It says it's gotta be less than or equal to 100. Okay, so I'll say 38, which is about right. Click the next button, and now I can go on with the survey. Now this time I'm gonna say that I'm a non-gambler. Right? I haven't gambled on any of these things, which means that I shouldn't be asked if I gamble online, I shouldn't be asked the PGSI, and I shouldn't be asked help seeking questions. So this should be the end of the survey for me. Now something's not working there. The PGSI is being shown to me. So let's go back and have a look at my logic. There's a problem I need to fix. So let's go back to our survey. So I should either have some display logic here for PGSI so that they're only asked this question if they're a gambler and I haven't got display logic set up. It could also be in survey flow. So I go to survey flow. So I can see that there's no branch here for PGSI. Everyone's seeing it down the main branch here. So I can set up a branch here so that PGSI is only shown to people who are gamblers. And rather than having to try and remember this whole thing about never in the last 12 months being less than eight or equal to eight or whatever, I've actually set up this gambler embedded data so I can use that as my condition for my branch. So I'll add a condition that's based on embedded data. The embedded data is called gambler and it's gotta be equal to one. Anyone who is a gambler should see the PGSI. Okay, so I fixed the problem with the PGSI appearing for non-gamblers. Let's go through the preview again and see what happens. So I will click on next, I will consent. And you can see that it's gonna get a bit annoying having to work through all these different previews over and over again, particularly when you've got a really long survey to work through a whole bunch of different branches. So I'm gonna show you something in a second that's gonna make testing even easier for you. So here we go, someone's not a gambler, they're not seeing any more questions, and that's precisely what should be happening. All right, let's do our preview again, but this time I'm going to be someone who gambles and someone who's experiencing some problems as well, so I should be asked the help seeking block, so we can see if that's working. 
So I click next. Yes, I consent. My gender is male. Age is, you know, 59. Neither Aboriginal nor Torres Strait Islander this time. Um, yes, I gamble on some stuff. Doesn't matter how many you gamble on, just have to gamble on one to get through to the next question. Sure, I gamble online. PGSI, I want to enter some values here which indicates that I've got some problems and then I should be asked the following questions about help seeking. And there we go. So that's working really nicely. Have you ever sought help at any point in your life? I need to select yes to see the next options. Uh, I'll select family and friends and then I'll select other and type something in here and see if that's piped through. So I will say something along those lines. They're often counselors for gambling people. So remember the next question carries over whatever answers I selected here. So I should say religious person, friends and family. And that's exactly what's happening. See, it's typing, uh, piping through whatever I said in the previous question. So I'll say that that's the best source of help for me. And that's the end of the survey. So that's how you can use previews to try and test your survey out. Now you can see that previews are going to get pretty tedious over time if we have to keep trying out all the different possible branches. Now you should still try and do that, but there's a really handy way to see if your survey is working here, and that is to generate test responses. So if I go into tools and review and generate test responses, there we go, generate test responses, then I'm gonna run 1000 test responses through here. And all this is, is a little script that will choose randomly the answers. So if it's a yes, no question, they're the only two options, about half the time it's gonna choose yes, and about half the time it's gonna choose no. But what we can also use this for is to, to, to determine if our skips, for example, are working as we think they should be. So I'm gonna run a thousand tests. This will take a second, I'll cut here. Okay, so that's taken about a minute and a half or so to run a thousand responses through my survey. Depending on how many screen out questions I have at the start, if I had age and gender and where they live, then, you know, not many of them might actually get through all of those screeners. So you might find that you need to run more than a few thousand here, but I'll just do a thousand for now. Now, what this will mean is that when I go to my data, I will have a thousand test responses in there and I can see if the pattern of responses lines up with what they should be. If someone says no to consent, then they shouldn't be asked any more questions and I can see if that's working. If someone says that they are not a gambler, then they shouldn't be asked any more questions. And again, I can see if that's working. I'm gonna show you in a couple of videos time how to download your data and what your data look like. And we'll have a look at these test responses then. But in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to get your survey ready. Let's say you've worked through all of your testing here and it seems to be working okay. Let's talk about how we get our survey ready, where we find our survey link, and how we can put it out there ready for people to take part. See you in the next video.